Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Crenshaw's podcast. Today we're discussing yes you guessed it right because I flipped on the title. So no no prizes for guessing that we're talking about season 3 of Stranger Things. So the season wrapped up a couple of weeks back and we've been the reason why we are late is because we were just overwhelmed by the response of the RRR video. We we didn't fathom this. that this would happen and thanks thanks a lot for showing us so much support thanks for setting up benchmark for us and we promise to deliver to your expectations every every single week uh this this week we're talking about the season oh sorry season 4 season 4 of stranger things uh oh that right. yeah uh-huh. so i mixed it up with the boys one that we're doing that we also uploaded this week yeah guys so, boys uh, we are going to do a boys review as well the finale review and stuff like that so keep a look out for our channel we are trying to keep up with everything okay so season 4 uh there are there's so much to talk about it simply because of the run times that the episodes have had i when i heard about the run time i was I was so excited about it because I just couldn't I was just thinking about what all things they'll be doing this season and what all things they'll be showing it's like the finale is literally longer than usual movies these days so I was very excited when I heard about the run times and it was a good season but it wasn't for me at least it wasn't the most perfect season of strange things like i was expecting a lot from it and there were a lot of good things and there were a lot of bad things as well so we're going to we're going to touch base on those things so right at the bat what was the best thing for you so the best thing i think of the season very obviously was the lovely character of eddie and uh, just a little sweetie pie you want to wrap up in a blanket and feed grapes to and i absolutely adore the acting the 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 showmanship of the you know when when a person really loves something everything about it is like overtly passionate overtly dramatic and he really nailed that right on the head and when he uh, welcomes people to the hellfire club and the way he like spreads his arms you know to like you know welcome like you know join us and and the the complete seriousness of of that game and how he is a person who's not graduated for a while <laughs> in the pursuit of dungeons and dragons i guess no uh uh in the pursuit of um trying to keep the club together so there is so much i don't know so much love so much uh, so much joy in seeing someone you know in that age passionate about something like that kind of character to be passionate about something because uh, sank and i were also um i think teenage weirdos we used to like completely fan out about dexter when you know the first couple of seasons of dexter had come out and uh and it, it is interesting to see those parallels you know when you appreciate something that not maybe is not very popular uh at least in the in the faction of uh, society faction of the world that sanket and i are from some things were not very popular but we loved them and then to see that in a character depicted so sweetly without you know like nerdifying uh the person because that happens a lot when a person is passionate about something especially in in uh, you know these kind of series they nerdify them to, to a point where that is their only um character trait but that wasn't eddie eddie was a lot of different things he he was also kind of like an older brother to a lot of people because he he literally looked out for them and uh, i really like that i think that was like my go to for 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 this season like i think no matter what happens in in the episodes he will always shine in the season and i think that's that's something worth watching for yeah even i related to the not wanting to grow up aspect of Eddie. Uh-huh. Because he already was having the best time of his life, so I can understand when you don't want to just, you know, move on from or just yeah. do different things in your life because yeah, it's already the best. 
my favorite thing about this season was the character arc of the villain of 001 vecna slash what 001 slash vecna slash ah uh, we forgot forgotten his name yeah. but papa's favorite boy <laughs> no a maya hawk's character says something right the like they can't decide which name to <laughs> which name I to can't. give i can't remember there yeah. was so many <laughs> so my favorite thing about the character arc was the way they built it up like we knew uh we the whole season the first part of the volume 1 at least of season 4 uh we were trying to figure out who vekna is and what vekna actually represents and but the Z- 001 character was somewhere in the mix up but i don't think the the thing that uh they did so well is that keeping 001 as an active character and still i don't think anybody could have guessed that he's the one who's going to transform into into vecna later so i think that was really good while i was watching uh, there's this one thing that i couldn't help but think how similar vecna's character is to voldemort's i had sent you the points that that are yeah. so similar to voldemort yeah. uh, very similar. way more than him not having a nose mm-hmm. right so there were a lot of things like him having daddy issues him wanting to wanting 11 to come on his side just like tom riddle in chamber of six secrets yeah wanting harry to come to his side there were a lot of panels that i do there i would say the finale of volume 1 worked for me better than volume 2 because of uh, the character arc i see what you mean yeah. my only disappointment with the season i'll be very frank is that there wasn't more of it i feel like i feel like the the season ended kind of uh with 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 not a lot of information about what vecna is going to do um and i think that's my only only i guess complaint i i don't really want to say like issue or something of that nature but i really wanted them to go more in depth about vecna because you're right he is he is like a stunning villain he is absolutely stunning villain he's just a person who has no real context of anything other than his own reality and those those are the best villain makers right the ones who are so um lost in what they think is right for everyone uh that they will basically kill or harm anyone that that doesn't support that theory and i think i don't know you're right that 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 arc is absolutely stunning and the reveal is stunning what a stunning reveal to to uh, introduce us to who vecna really is i mean you never see it that way you never see villains introduced that way yeah yeah that is why uh, that part where in the in the finale in the volume 2 finale where he's he's telling 11 about his journey in the upside down and how he discovered those things how he discovered the world i thought that was really well done so but yeah i i think i don't think it's the end of vecna i thought the way they killed him was very abrupt so i think i think he's coming back yeah i think the intent i hope the intent of the season was to give us all the information we will need for the finale and yeah. if that was the intention then they have succeeded then they have succeeded throughout in the season then i have no complaints uh but but for me like i think i don't know it's kind of weird when you see the way vecna you you realize that vecna was the child in the in the torture house or in the murder house or whatever and it was a child that was causing all of it i think the the reason that reveal is so slick and so smart is because so many times these things happen in houses where it's like oh my god it was a ghost oh my god it was a demon somebody possessed like it was something supernatural and they established that yes it was supernatural but it wasn't an outside entity it was something that was happening inside the house and that's why the boy survived and no one else survived and to miss such a very laudable detail 
uh, actually shows the the idea of fear mongering and how so easy it is to fear monger and to build an entire um, uh, reality or a belief on the basis of a lie. And I think that's what they managed to do through the series as well, through the bullies, the, the jock bullies that were just fear mongering and uh, spreading bad tales about Eddie, that Eddie was a person who was basically into demon worship or something like that and, and forcing Eddie to hide because of a very unfortunate circumstance between him and Chrissy. And even those moments between Chrissy and Eddie, right? So sweet and so uh, otherworldly. And uh, I don't know, I, I was very, very impressed with how these characters who are not 11, who are not part of the original gang, had so much uh, to be introduced uh, to within the season. Like they had so many different, uh, like with Vecna, we could see how he was trained just like 11 and, and then how he found that other world. And then with Eddie and Chrissy, you could see that he, he's just a softy, but he's a, he's a softy with like an edge. So when people go to him, they go to him because they trust him, not because he's a guy who deals in drugs or whatever. And I think that's like, the, those panels are very cute, like between the villain and the hero. And I love in this story that the hero is defeated. The hero literally gets defeated in the storyline. And I think that's what I really loved best about the season because you never see that. You always see the hero emerge victorious. But if Vecna's the villain, then Eddie's definitely the hero of the storyline. And uh, to justify uh, Vecna's survival, right? Because Vecna's not dead. As far as we know, he was burnt. But he's not dead dead because he did manage to do the damage he wanted to do. And uh, I think to see a villain who is so, and they say that somewhere, right? Like it's not a fair fight. We are not going to win against Vecna. That's the point of Vecna. We are not going to win against him. And to properly establish that, that yes, they did lose. And maybe that's the issue with the story that we saw heroes lose, that some people we've been rooting for for three seasons, maybe that's why we're a little you know, sad about the season, I don't know. But I yeah, think I... my main my main problem with the season, actually I loved the volume one, which had uh, seven episodes. Yeah. I loved yes. loved them. In eighth and ninth, I was actually expecting them to further the plot in the sense that I wanted to I wanted them to give more surprises. Yes. But I think they were more focused on ending the storyline. And yeah. that through that, I think they concentrated more on the spectacle of it, of how they want to end it, rather than, you know, giving us more storyline there. Yeah. So spectacle-wise, obviously they scored 10 on 10. Absolutely. But like I said, like when I saw the run times, I was actually expecting them to dig deeper into the upside down storyline and that is what i did not get so that is why i would say yeah but yeah volume one works more more than volume two i would have loved to see um the parallel explanations of everything that was happening the previous seasons in this season so every time eleven was like paired up against some villain like the mind flayer or those weird uh, creatures that open up like a like a flower <laughs> uh, had had they given us parallels of what Vecna was doing in the background without Eleven realizing it was Vecna like like this is how he released the plan and this is why the plan actually failed uh, that would have been really really awesome to see because I think the previous season they have this uh, um, I, do you remember where they use uh, the girl's brother. Um, what's what's the girl's name? Al Alex? Max. Max. So Max's I don't brother. About yeah, I Billy Billy. So so one of the things that I really, really like about the current season is that they have these constant callbacks to Billy. So they keep showing Billy kind of still trapped in um, in the upside down, but in your in like the mind. So they have truly played that wonderful trick that this is not really about a physical place anymore. This is about tormented people, their tormented minds, uh, about being bullied by, you know, central 
paternal figures in their life. And I think I really, really liked that part about this time Stranger Things because they went there. They spoke about how mental trauma can cause more damage than an actual living being themselves. Yeah. And I think that's kind of like very interesting to me. Yeah, I think that it was a great decision for them to not just just ignore the fact that, you know, her brother had, brother had died and she just moves on in the next season so instead of that they chose to chose to make this a very important thing in this later season what else oh i loved the use of master of puppets of pulling the strings so <laughs> i'm a big i'm a big metallica fan so that was a big fan service moment for me i loved the uh, eddie and dustin dustin my favorite character mm-hmm. playing master of puppets I loved so there were a couple of musical scenes, right? There was Master of Puppets, and there was the other one, which I forget the name of the song that they play to bring Max back from Beckner. That was also a great moment. The fact that they discover the whole scene where they discover mm-hmm. the song that she would like and how I she's struggling and how she's struggling in the upside down to come back. That was really well done. I think the call out to music, considering that if no matter what happens in Stranger Things, we have to remember this. They brought back some of some really amazing 80s music that we really should be listening to. And uh, I mean, Kate Bush is running up the hill. I have listened to it when I didn't quite understand the lyrics. And I used to love it because I used to love the initial introductory haunting sound. And the fact that they explained in the season that music is not just to like make a scene more interesting but it is literally contributing to the character's uh, premise whether or not they're going to survive something I thought that was very 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 cool and uh, they, they, they they have done very well in that department I think the soundtrack department no matter what happens in the final season they have like won over there outright won over there and um, to think that I don't know. I think whenever I uh, listen to like the Pulp Fiction soundtrack or the Kill Bill soundtrack, right, and I listen to all the songs that were used, I always like feel more feelings towards the story. And considering that (laughs) Running Up the Hill got, oh my God, everybody was using Running Up the Hill on Instagram, on TikTok, everybody was going crazy for it. And and also, like, not really using it for the right things. <laughs> like, as, a, as a person using it to, like, do makeup and then basically show that she is now a transformed woman. <laughs> completely <laughs> missed the point of the song. The song in Stranger Things is about coming to terms with your actual self. So maybe mm-hmm. that, that, that makes sense. You know what? You're right. I take back my words. There is, it, it has been interpreted in very many ways and people are, uh, I think, looking at it more beyond like life and death. And I think that's why that song worked so well, where it's not just about life and death. Yeah. But, oh, one thing I really want to talk about is the, the references to things which are not Stranger Things, but in Stranger Things. So you're right about number one, which is Voldemort and Beckner. They are literally... The same villain. Yeah. Number two, when uh, was it Mike? Is Mike El- uh, Eleven's uh, boyfriend? Yes. So Mike, when when she gets like tied up in the upside down by Vecna Eleven, and Mike is trying to revive her and talk to her, and he's like, "I love you. I love you as you are, and you are flawless to me, with or without your powers and stuff like that." That dialogue is exactly like how Trinity spoke with Neo when Neo died um, in the in the simulation, oh. and uh, yeah, and she says, uh, uh, "What Neo? I was told that I would fall in love with the man who was the one, and I'm in love with you, so you're the one. So stand up and fight." And then Neo comes back, and all the bullets just leave his body. It's kind of that same thing and I recently learned that Stranger Things itself the universe has come from an anime uh it's uh, I think it's called uh 
something the 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 duff brothers like they basically said duffer, elf duffer and guy sorry the the duffer brothers uh, elf can you add guy. like whenever you think about surnames just add an er at the end see then one new problem will start okay <laughs> think about think if that is where you want to if that is Tarantino. where you want to go tarantino <laughs> or in tarantino but the the series itself has been inspired by elfin light and it's a uh, i don't know when i'm seeing the snapshots and everything of of elf i've not watched the anime yet but it is very similar looking so they have a lot of stuff they have taken from several other places which are very nuanced very important to i guess you know that faction of cinema or or content making and they have pulled all of that in into stranger things so that's that's interesting considering there very are three things now mm-hmm. very interesting oh one more which is a very obvious reference is the silence of the lambs re- reference when maya hawk's character and uh, mike's sister they go to visit vecna's dad oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and he's locked up in a cell doesn't communicate doesn't socialize with other prisoners so when they first see him mhm they take very little comfort that they're in a prison or uh, yeah. an, or an asylum yeah. and they're very scared he he isn't even looking at them and they're already scared that was something that is staple to the introduction scene in signs of the lambs yeah i can totally see that and also it is very revelatory of um of mike's sister isn't it because when uh, when mike's sister like i don't know when she is she talks to this guy and she understands like what whatever is happening what, her name is what nancy right Nan- nancy wheeler so yeah. so uh, see i didn't say wheel this time i said wheeler oh <laughs> you didn't say wheeler or you know what <laughs> you know what that's completely okay I don't care. Roger, so Nancy Roger Federer. <laughs> so Nancy Wheeler, she learns stuff about herself, right? Because I think when she realizes that Vecna was actually the boy or whatever, and then she gets kidnapped by uh, by Vecna, and he shows her how Bob died and how everybody's now part of the Upside Down. It's like a revelation that happens to her about herself. Mm-hmm. and i think that is like very that was very scary for me because i i'll tell you one more thing i was very sure that someone from the main gang was going to die i was very sure about that that was my theory yeah yeah even i was thinking and they should have killed someone mm-hmm. uh, maybe they'll do that next season i think they'll do that in the finale because the the way they won they didn't win this right for the past yeah. two times yeah. now if you think about it they actually lost the uh, first time they lost 11 lost her powers so that's like losing and also billy died r- right like r- while she was there billy died and the second time not only did they proper lose the gates to hell are open the four gates um uh, our uh, uh, max is dead like in a coma i guess and uh, our edi didn't even get redeemed as the hero they are still calling him a devil and they're still blaming everything on him so that's there was why, that final show yeah go, go 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 yeah that's why i'm just saying that's why i think that that this is not the last that we've seen of vecna because when he comes back he's going to wreak more havoc yeah and yeah I, so i think the first three seasons were about the demogorgon and establishing the upside down i think from season 5 and i think season season 4 and season 5 there's sort of sort of ending the story in some way hmm i see what you mean and uh, yeah i i'm i kind of very excited that they're going to take till 2024 to come out with the final season yeah yeah uh, i'm used to I, that because yeah hbo does that right 
Yeah. Game, they did that with Game of Thrones. They're doing that with fucking Succession. Can't. Yeah. Succession is. Oof. I'm very excited for for Stranger Things finale because I think one first of all, Joyce and Harper need to get it on, man. Like they need to get it on. They deserve if nothing, just that much. Like, first of all, to be parents to such weird ass kids, it's not their fault <laughs> that they're parents to the kids who keep getting kidnapped into the upside down. Second of all, I would really like to see Steve Harrington like get a good redemption arc. You know, like I feel like he's gone through a lot of shit and he deserves something, like anything, you know, uh, some shot at happiness. And um, I really am looking forward to I don't know. I kind of thought Eleven was going to be revealed as the villain this season. I am still open to that ending. If they figure a way out to get there, I'm still open to that. That would be very daring for a show which is which started as a kids show. Now it's uh, way more gory than the first season. But yeah, I think that would be very, very ballsy. Yeah. A- anyways, uh, oh, we didn't talk about we spoke about Hopper and. Hopper and who? Joyce. Hopper and Joyce, right? So we didn't. We need to touch on the Russia sequence. Yeah. So, so I liked everything that happened after they're using the prisoners as as a sport for the as for the demo. Sport and for training to for, understand yeah. the demogorgon. Yeah. yeah, for the demogorgons and all the sequences related to Joyce and what's the other guy's name? My Not favorite. Yuri. Yeah, my favorite thing about. The whole Russia sequence was Yuri. He's he's a proper goofy character who's I think his superpowers are his dad dad jokes. The fact that he named his helicopter after his girlfriend only because the front side of the helicopter is round. And that reminds him of the <laughs> breast. And then he says uh, Tatinka. Tatinka is what he names the chopper. Yeah. And he says, oh, they, they are about to, they want to fly off home on that chopper. But he said, the thing is not ready. She she has never flown. <laughs> She's a virgin. <laughs> not my the thing. <laughs> this the thing. My the thing, no. <laughs> She's definitely not a virgin. <laughs> I like the dynamic between Yuri and, and Murray. Oh, so Murray is the Murray, guy. Murray, who... yeah. I really think that Murray also like deserves a little something. Like he's gone through so much hell, poor guy. Like I, I genuinely thought if he was going to go with Joyce, he was going to come like not come back alive. Like he was going to die over there. And uh, I was kind of relieved that they didn't kill him off because I feel like Murray brings a lot of logic to the story. Like he he gives a lot of explanation to the dimensions and stuff like that. Like I think when uh, Joyce Hopper and Marie when they walk into the little clinic where they see a demogorgon's chest like split open and they are I think conducting experiments and torturing it um, I think that realization of Marie that there are things worse than the demogorgons right like that's that's the realization of Marie like the demogorgons are not the actual bad people in this it's the ones who are releasing them into this world and I really like that that you know the three of them had like such an interesting dynamic and also <laughs> every time Joyce and Oppo were having a moment Murray was like there like the human condom like, <laughs> nice I like the <laughs> I like the word human condom yeah because he was always getting like <laughs> in between them two and so much uh, that's a tension. variation variation to cock blocking like I'm going to use human condom yeah, or beaver damming. And, uh, <laughs> 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 but there is, a, I think there is a lot of wonderful context to everything that was happening parallel in, in they were in Russia, right? Like, and uh, to give us like explanation of how this is happening, how those particles are going to like infect everything. And I like that very much in the season that they were, not just all of them crammed in Hawkins, trying to figure out everything in Hawkins. Like, because this, the smart thing to do is to split up 
like that is always the smart thing to do and they actually did split up in this like literally in different cities different parts of the world and they have more information now than they have had in the past three seasons which i think is fantastic like hopper coming back was very nicely justified in this season otherwise with the way he he died in the previous season they would really have to like his his return would have to like have some meaning otherwise there's no point to the story so another favorite scene of mine is the reunion between hopper and 11 that was yeah. such a sweet moment i i i cried obviously so when i found out about i've been anticipating this reunion when i when i found out about hopper being alive i was in my mind i was just uh, imagining the imagining how the scene would play out and it surpassed all my expectations the line that she says that i always kept my door open 3 inches open Oh, I know that is so sweet. Oh God, I'm thinking of like every time my dad would come back, like from a very long work trip or something, and I don't know. I think the kind of relief. There's a. It's not just about joy. Like oh my God, it's so happy to see. No, it's more about relief. Like okay, you know, like my big strong dad is back like he's back and now i have nothing to worry about no monsters to to be afraid of uh and he used to say that right to her to always keep her door open yeah because he was because <laughs> she was making out with mike in the room <laughs> yes um i love their relationship mainly because simply because uh, it's the most purest relationship in the show for me yeah it's not yeah. built out of blood or any any sort of selfish thing it's it's pure very pure very um comes from a very beautiful place like in, especially in these storylines where these are likely people people become family i think there is some very amazing beauty to that and Oh what about um that scene uh, not dustin but this um will who yeah. is joyce's son will will yeah okay okay so the will scene where, where will byers yeah where will byers basically talks to a uh, mike and he tells him that you need to understand that 11 will love you no matter what and it's not about protecting her it's about loving her it's about accepting her for who she is because who she is is something very special and if you can't see that that's what she wants from you your acceptance then the, the, this whole thing is pointless and he shows in the painting he made for him and everything and then he starts weeping outside the window and that moment between him and his brother i thought that was really really beautiful where his brother is like you can you can tell me things like you can you can share things with me you can tell me if you're going through something and i think of course the i guess everybody uh everybody in will's family knows i think right like joyce knows i think and uh will obviously knows uh i don't know i think there is some there's some kind of beauty in the way they're just standing there in a weird kitchen of some of some pizza restaurant and he said you don't have to go through this alone you don't have to like whatever your identity is whatever you are like i will love you as you are and those moments were like very very beautiful um i think nancy wheeler kind of having feelings for her ex in these very soft moments where she was healing his wounds and giving him uh i don't know these little cute little stares every now and then and him finally admitting that you know in the world where there are many steve harringtons i see you there next to me and i don't know there was a very soft sweet moments which were very i liked it like you know everything was not about 11 and that was kind of nice like i i liked that the story was branching out yeah yeah they better nail the coming out scene there is going to be a coming out scene of will with her Yes. with the friends and the mother and the mom yeah 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 yeah, yeah. absolutely 
so that's oh, what okay. i'm again um, excited about i hope the coming out scene happens in a way where it's like so much chaos around them and they have to stop for a second say <laughs> we we love you <laughs> and then go back to fighting off whatever they fight yeah maybe like he and his mother they're uh, they're fighting some monster and at that moment will decides to <laughs> yeah uh tell her yeah and then she's like are you done <laughs> because we have a monster to fight <laughs> so i know i know okay <laughs> now <laughs> now that we all know can we all move on <laughs> i don't know that would be like it would be sad if you know his coming out moment was taken away that way but it would also be really funny uh, yeah. and I, i i think i think even that scene like the the chaos scenes where what's uh, uh, nancy wheel as an upside down and uh, you know the the hawk girl and eddie and everybody are looking for music and they're like oh my god this is blondie and this is this is like which one is it? which one of which one of this is music and then eddie grabs one of those castles and goes this is music <laughs> like because like everybody's shrieking out and they don't know how to bring her back and i think there is some some i want to know why vecna let her live though like why did vecna let nancy live like why didn't he just kill nancy it was like don't kill the messenger types so But- but nancy never got to give that message to 11 so he wanted to he wanted her to go back in not 11 but to everyone but everybody else. yeah okay okay i see what you mean yeah but yeah the the chaos elements in in the story lines were very very beautiful and i was i even liked the part where uh steve is kind of hyping up his his gal and he's like yeah trust me she likes women just like you like you know <laughs> i like boobies you like boobies everybody likes boobies <laughs> the <laughs> soft moments i think the car ride moments very cute and uh, stranger things this season was it the best season i don't think so but was it the softest sweetest most vulnerable moment filled season absolutely Yeah, like I said, volume one was better than volume two. My problems were with the ending. I think the timings, the running time, wasn't justified for the endings. I was expecting a lot, lot more information. Nah, for and it was the ending for me was too vanilla. Yeah. But yeah, the story and everything was I really loved. Oh, I I I hope they bring back the chaotic house of Dustin's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> with the kids and everything <laughs> i like that the opening of the thing is like he gets immediately shot with an arrow in his head <laughs> yeah uh yeah okay. there is uh, the callbacks are beautiful i really like dustin shine and uh, I think all the characters had like a very good time this season. They they really show their acting skills. Yeah, can't wait, can't wait for the series finale. One thing I would like to end with, if anybody is trying to understand how to love another person, I think that the scene between Max and uh, her boyfriend or her ex boyfriend, um, when he she gives him a letter and she says you know this is a safety net you know in case i die in the upside down and caleb her, her boyfriend is what uh, caleb caleb lucas. no her boyfriend is uh, lucas yeah and lucas is like i'm right here you don't have to give me a letter and the way how he tenderly holds her when she's like back from the upside down but she's bleeding from her eyes and he's just holding her and and he doesn't know like what to do because he was not expecting things will go so bad uh i think i hope that they have they, that they explain what happens to max in the in the final thing because she's not dead but she's not alive either so i think that's where the show ended right where 11 could not read her mind anymore so hmm 
I would really like to see what, what has actually happened to Max. Like, if she's not dead, then how did the fourth gate open? Yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, I think we've given a lot of information. We've done a lot of spoilers. Guys, please, please subscribe. You guys are watching us and you're not subscribing. Subscription is free. Just do it. It's a party over here. Join us and uh, like and share and 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 tell us what you liked about you know the, the the episode and give us suggestions, guys. We are really looking forward to your suggestions because yeah. Sunk and I watch a lot of stuff, but and we fight every, every week. week. We fight every week to select what we're going to talk about. So it's better <laughs> that you would, you would suggest yeah. us. Why don't you suggest to us? Because it will save us a couple of arguments. And Sank said something which was very interesting to me. He said, we need you guys to talk to us like how we are talking to each other. Just tell us. Tell us what's, what's going on. Tell us what you're watching. Tell us what makes you feel good. Talk to us about stuff that is like comfort watching right now. And, and don't restrict it to movies or Netflix or anything. If there's a graphic novel you guys are really excited about, let's talk about that. But tell us, like, you know, subscribe to us. Let us know that we are, you know, on the same page as you. All right. Let's end it. Okay. Bye-bye, guys. Love you. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, Bella.